This is the Everything EV Podcast by EV Powered. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Everything EV Podcast, the podcast dedicated to everything electric. I'm your host, Charlie Atkinson, and in these episodes, we'll be discussing everything to do with electric travel. So whether it be cars, bikes, boats, or even planes, we'll have it covered. We'll also be speaking to people from within the industry to get their views on the EV space, as well as other features such as electric car reviews, electric motorsport coverage, and much, much more along the way. This podcast is available on all streaming platforms, so be sure to subscribe to wherever you get your podcast from to receive every single episode as soon as it's released. And please do go back and check out all our other episodes too. In this episode, EV Powered's Associate Editor, Cherry Martin, speaks to Massimo Chialoni, the Chief Compounder Specialist for Hankook Tyres. Last month, Cherry was invited to Austria to test Hankook's new Ion tyres, which have been engineered to meet the growing demand for electric driving, from improved range per battery charge to noise reduction and outstanding driving performance. The event also corresponded with the announcement of Hankook being named as the official tyre supplier of the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. At an event in the Swarovski Crystal Worlds in Austria, Hankook officially presented the newly developed Hankook Ion race tyres to guests and representatives of Formula E and Cherry had the opportunity to speak to Massimo about these tyres and their capabilities. So congratulations on the news uh, for the Formula E partnership. That's um, true testament to the amount of R&D that has gone into the years of planning to, to get that, that partnership to come to life. Um, you're, is it my understanding that you're only allowed one tyre for wet and dry conditions in Formula E? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Yeah, yeah. We do have only one tyre in Formula E races, which leads to um, performing both wet and dry conditions. And yeah. this is one of the many differences between Formula 1 and Formula E races. Yeah, that, that must make it extraordinarily hard to produce a tyre to do that how how many have you tested indeed indeed several uh, tire sets as well as several uh, months if not years in several specific formulations but we do think that formula e is uh, perfectly aligned with our sustainability vision and the roadmap because the formula e has been designed to be more sustainable than formula one and this goes uh, really in line with our a vision about sustainability and the future of our company. Yeah, so um, it's um, thirty percent of your tires are made from renewable sources, aren't they? Indeed, there is a big uh, discussion, let's say, mm. about what, what sustainability and what's sustainable, mm. and we are in the middle of, of of it. We have a very clear vision roadmap about sustainability targets and goals in the next twenty to twenty five years. And we are planning to uh, increase every year the amount of sustainable materials. But to do so, we have to uh, certify that the materials that we um, are using are sustainable. This is why we are the first company, the first tire company, um, to that obtained the ISCC Plus certification with uh, in our Gumsan plant in Korea and our Hungarian plant will come very soon. It is very important. It's also requested by OE makers that the sustainable materials being used in our tires are certified as such. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's amazing to get that. Um, if they're that if they're made from renewable sources, what what's what are those sources? So uh, you know, sustain- sustainability uh, in the world uh, is a very broad concept. And it involves uh, sustainable materials, biosources, recycled sources as well. Mm -hmm. So for each individual traditional raw material, we already identify an alternative source of supply. Mm -hmm. It can be of various origin, it can be bio, it can be recycled. Yeah, yeah. So um, you're you're supplying all the tyres for all of the different teams for the Formula E. Uh, What happens to those tyres when they are, when they're used? Are they going to be recycled? Yeah, tires can be, so uh, you see, uh, we see more and more um, uh, recycling uh, opportunities for tires. You know, tires, they have a second, third life thanks to retreading. Yeah. But nowadays, we see a lot of uh, new opportunities in terms of uh, recycling uh, 
uh, options. So tire can be, for example, pyrolyzed, and from that tire you can get a lot of very interesting uh, secondary raw materials that can be reused in our in our manufacturing process. So life has more than one life, definitely, and yeah. uh, we see uh, on the market a lot of uh, opportunities nowadays. Yeah. So um, looking into the formulary um, element, what are the considerations that uh, for a Formula E tyre that are specifically quite different to Formula One? Uh, I, uh, I'd say that the Formula E tyres are really different from Formula One tyres. Mm -hmm. First of all, the Formula One tyres have a very short life. They must last for a couple of... <laughs> maybe not even 100 kilometers, maybe 100 to 100 kilometers, whereas the Formula E tires have to survive for several competitions, have to keep the same performance uh, for several competitions. And then the Formula E uh, tires are used in normal uh, city circuits, so normal roads with normal, uh, normal asphalt conditions. Whereas the Formula One tires are used in specifically designed race circuits, and that this makes our life more uh, challenging. Yeah. So, uh, another big difference is, is that in Formula uh, E, in Formula One, you have a lot of different patterns. If it is uh, wet and dry, semi slick, etc. Whereas in Formula E, you have only one pattern. And this pattern needs to adjust. It's to fit into all weather conditions. And I think these are quite uh, different and challenging differences. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's no, it's no mean feat. How, how long has it actually taken to create the, the tyre? So it's, uh, it took us a long time, but I have to say that we have a long tradition history in motorsport and motorcycle, motorsport, sorry, activities. Mm -hmm. So we have a very uh, remarkable background and knowledge about uh, races. And uh, this um, was very useful for us in order to develop uh, the, the most suitable ties or even for Formula E. And furthermore, we have uh, quite a large experience also in electric vehicle mm -hmm. tire development as well as sustainability, sustainable materials. Yeah. And these three aspects are combined in uh, during the development of a Formula E tire. Mm. Yeah, and it's quite exciting for those. So all of the Formula E enthusiasts um, can get involved and use the road legal version of the tire, the Hankook iron. Um, and that's, I've been astounded by testing it out. I was fortunate enough, Hankook flew me over to Austria to go and try out the braking capabilities of the tyre compared to the um, various competitors in the same conditions. And um, listeners, honestly, when I slammed on the brakes to come to a hard stop, the comparison of the of the competitors caused the tyres to, they wouldn't grip the road. So I was basically... If I was on the um, autobahn or the motorway, I would have swerved into other lanes, which would have been quite obviously dangerous with other traffic. And with the Hankook irons held me exactly in place and drew me to a stop. Um, it, the difference was phenomenal. Um, and this is good for our products and also for the lives of our customers. Yes. Breaking is a very important uh, performance because yeah. short breaking distance can save lives and that's very important yeah no definitely definitely you you know you uh, it's fair to say i think you know that you can spend as much as you want on the car but the at the end of the day it's what's gripping it to the road and its contact with the road will define how well that car performs um so you want it to be, indeed. yeah you want it to be responsive um so what were the conflicting goals when creating the, the tyres for EV vehicles? Because I think that's quite different, isn't it, compared to um, a fuel combustion vehicle? Quite different, remarkably different, I would say. First of all, there is a, a huge... Um, uh, we have to reach a much higher abrasion resistance, uh, resistant compounds. So the, the tread compounds must uh, face a higher torque. And for this reason, we developed a specifically a specific family of a new family of compounds 
that uh, show much, much increased uh, wear resistance. And these we did for two main reasons. One is to balance the higher torque of the electric vehicles. And the second one is to um, consume less raw materials because sustainability goes also uh, through minor, less usage of raw materials. Of, mm -hmm. And this is extremely important to, to us. And this fits also into our sustainability vision. Yeah. So we have to we have to consume less raw materials if we want to be more sustainable. On the other hand, it is also important to reduce the weight of the tire, because as you know, the air inside the tire and the weight of the tire they play the major role in determining the rolling resistance of the tire. The less the weight, the better the rolling resistance. So there are many reasons why we had to to improve the wear resistance of our uh, tread compounds. And we did that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think many people are, are realizing, especially over in the UK, that if you invest in an EV car, it needs, it, you know, it's just going to eat regular tires up uh, with that extra weight and torque um, behind it. So, yeah, spreading the word that they're going to be safer and get more out of the vehicles. It is indeed a new category of vehicles. So tires needed to be adjusted, need to, need to be redesigned yeah. to fit to, to these vehicles. Yeah, definitely. So is it is it harder to adapt a winter tire for EV cars compared to a summer car? Yes, indeed, for several reasons. The first one is that by nature, the winter tire is uh, noisier than the summer tire because in, on, on winter tire you have many more sipes and you know the the more sipes you have the noisier the tire and mm -hmm. so that's why we had to develop a very special uh, siping technology in order to reduce the noise of the pattern and this is also why we developed and introduced in our um, products the so-called the sound absorber it's a special foam it's a special uh, material that you can have inside the the cavity of the tire and that reduces a lot the noise mm. uh, generated by the cavity of the tie. So we call it internal noise. Mm. So these two technology, technical technological solutions can minimize the, the noise produced naturally by the tie. Mm. Uh, secondly, the the more the, the higher amount of sipes on the winter tread pattern causes a higher um, mobility of the blocks. And this uh, has a detrimental effect or impact on the rolling resistance because more heat is generated. And for that reason, we had to develop a new winter compounds that can minimize or, or improve our rolling resistance. Yeah. So um, in what can drivers do to um drive safe and reduce energy loss with their EV cars in, in the winter? Are there extra things that they can do? So, you know, when when uh, we discuss a lot and uh, we've been discussing a lot about the rolling resistance and the impact on performance and properties affecting rolling resistance, we have to keep in mind that the first most important parameter that affects the rolling resistance of the tire is the air inside the tire. So it is always, I would say, recommendable, but I would also say mandatory to check the, the, the pressure, the inflation pressure of our tires. If we uh, reduce uh, the, the pressure, um, which occurs naturally, this is a natural occurring phenomenon. If, if the tire pressure, the inflation pressure is reduced, the rolling resistance is dramatically increasing. So we have to keep the inflation pressure of our tires at a very consistent and uh, optimum level. This is my suggestion. Yeah, yeah, okay. Is that something, um, going back to the Formula E, the tire pressure is um, regulating that for every race condition. Is that one way of actually making sure that that one sole tire can actually cope with all of the different conditions? Yes, the answer is yes. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, so, it's so interesting to um, to see how that's going to come out next year. Superseding Michelin is no mean feat. So, well, yes, that's, cool. uh, that's true. But yeah. as I said, we have our, our own long 
race uh, tradition. So yes. So motorsport tradition. Without that, it wouldn't have been so easy to develop. Ties yeah. Well. It's a nice, uh, very natural progression for, for the company as a whole, isn't it? Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. And I know um, Formula E are very excited as well. So we're going to be covering the full Formula E season next year. So we will definitely stay in touch with you and, and touch base and see how it's all going. But thank you very much Looking for your time forward. today. You are really welcome. It was my pleasure. That's all for this episode. Many thanks for listening. And if you liked it, then please do check out all our other episodes and be sure to subscribe to wherever you get your podcast from to make sure you get every single episode as soon as it's released. For daily news coverage, features and much more, you can also head over to evpowered.co.uk. Thanks once again for listening and we'll see you on the very next episode of the Everything EV podcast.